Jenga. Here we are again. Yes. Okay, so before we get in and talk about our guest, I know we've both been watching some new TV shows. What's yes. that going on? Absolutely. Oh. Unsolved Mysteries uh, isn't really a new show. However, I will say the Unsolved Mysteries, this the second series or episodes or season, I guess, are much better than the first one. And I'm actually really, um, I really liked them. Uh, they had all kinds of different stories and global stories, which I liked. And it was just a really interesting story about the uh, tsunami that happened in Japan. And like there's ghost sightings and some of the sort of the mm-hmm. science behind it as yeah. well as the spirituality and then there's another one where this lady is, goes missing and they think it's a suicide but it's really not you know the it, worst part is it's unsolved and like if you you know yeah me, you don't like it when they leave you on a cliffhanger yeah. yeah but they're so good so I struggle with that a little bit okay so what I found again by the time people watch this or listen to this it's going to be a couple weeks old but it came out this weekend the queen's gamut yes I remember okay. that yeah it's based but, on a book yeah. Uh, so it's not a true story, but it's based on a book. And there's a lot of the, uh, evidently a lot of thought put into the, about how one plays chess. Mm-hmm. Fascinating story about a little girl who's a chess prodigy player. <laughs> it, it pulls you in in a way uh, that it's so just different. I think it's really well done. And I've got like two more episodes to watch for this. Uh, I think it's just a mini series. I don't know if it's going to have multiple seasons, but. So Which leads us, we, got a, we got a good session coming up. We got an amazing session. I'm super excited. It's We're like a trend have, we have going on here. People haven't figured this out by yet. We are super excited to have Ashley and Maitri on. And they're with Zessa Wellness. And um, we're going to talk a little bit about gratitude today. Holidays are coming up and uh, there's COVID. And this is a whole new world for all of us. And, and just being laid off on top of it, right? A lot of folks who are listening are wondering, you know, how am I going to sort of tread through these waters? Because it's, it's a, not just a, um, not having to deal with, you know, being laid off, but also having to deal with uh, complications with families. And then mm-hmm. people talking about all the accomplishments that they're, uh, they've gone through and they've had, and then, you know, others who may be laid off may not have those and, and those feelings of sadness and, and fear and anxiety um, is, is a big part of our of folks lives right now. So we want to talk a little bit about how to um, practice gratitude and kind of change that mind a little bit. And I think it kind of goes well with our uh, doctor, Ankur uh, Patel, the neuroscience and, you know, the science behind that. Well, and it, it also plays back to one of our, uh, some of our other sessions, like the one with uh, Debbie with on the Reiki. And then mm-hmm. I've been back to the yes and yoga. And I would even say, even if you, if you watched our, our four day weekend guys uh, talking about like you know, that, that how they make a good situation, uh, you know, out of bad things too. So there's like a theme going on. I hope people will start to catch on to this. Uh, and, and then I know we have some more people coming after this one too. They're going to, you know, uh, it's all coming together as this kind of how we choose and happiness and get through these tough times and, and make it a habit. Right. So, and it's not even I- intentional. I feel like yeah, it's no, just sort of it hasn't falling been into intentional. place and it's, just like it's, those, uh, cookies and the, the fortunes that we've had in the past as well. It's like, yeah, it falls into place. It, is. it does fall in place. It's a, yeah. the universe kind of tells us what it, it's saying. If we listen, yeah. you know, the hey, universe, we, if you're listening, I need to win the lottery. Just a heads up. You know, <laughs> throwing it out there. I'm putting it out in the universe. Right Put now. it out in the universe. Exactly. I need to win the big jackpot. Let me just be very specific in my want. I don't need to win just a $3 lottery scratch ticket. Off that was scratch off. <laughs> no, the millions and millions of dollars. But remember, magic has a price. So yes, yes. But until then, I'll be grateful for what I have. All right. Well, let's get to let's read. um, It's uh, Ashley and my three. Got it. All right. Thank you so much, my three and Ashley for joining. We are super excited for you guys to be here. Before we move forward, I did want to take a little bit of time to introduce both of you guys and let you guys tell us a little bit about yourselves. Um, let's go ahead and start with uh, my three. I believe you're, I should be calling you Dr. Vedia, but uh, we'll go into that a little bit. Um, so tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, guys. So for those of you that don't know me, my name is Maitri Vaidya. Um, I am Chief Wellness Officer with Zessa Wellness, um, and I'm also a healthcare professional. Um, I'm in and out of hospitals, um, helping them with their quality management. 
Um, I've had the opportunity to work with Zessa um, and Ashley. We've created this fabulous program. Um, it, we really are a mindfulness program for corporations. Um, so we come into organizations and we um, provide them the skills and techniques um, in order to um, help enhance their mindfulness as, as a group. Um, so we, Ashley and I have been working on this and been on this journey for the past five years or so. Then she'll go into a little bit more detail about it, but I'm excited to be here um, and talk to you guys about uh, gratitude today. Great. Thanks, my three. Um, my name is Ashley Hardcastle Alopra, and I am the um, chief executive officer, co founder of Zessa Wellness. I'm also a professor of philosophy. And um, as my three said, we've been growing this baby for about five years now. And our, our goal is to really help individuals, people, companies create a, a lifestyle that really provokes overall well being and happiness. And I know happiness is such a cliche word, but um, there's a lot of science behind happiness. And there's a lot of things that we actually can do to change our, our ways of thinking, change our structure of our brain that can allow us to live a happier lifestyle. And I think that gratitude, and not just an opinion, but science does show that the practice of gratitude can actually make us happier and healthier. Um, so I'm very excited to discuss this topic today in a time when we are, um, most of all of us are struggling in some way due to just the current situation in the world. And I think, you know, trying to find times when, when we're thankful or things that we're grateful for can be difficult and challenging in times like this. And so hopefully today we can talk about some things we can do to, to change the way we think about gratitude and actually what it really is and what it means to, to feel gratitude versus actually being a grateful person. So thank you for having us on today. That's great. Yeah. Thank you ladies for joining us today. Uh, and so I think we should just step in. I, I want to know what is the definition of gratitude? I, you know, I think we all have our own perspective of what that is. Uh, and so I'd love to hear from Zessa wellness and both of you being in the, um, academic and science side of the world to what that what that defines us. So thank you for asking that question. I'm actually going to read a few of these to you um, because there's so many different definitions of gratitude. There's not just one. I mean, you can look at Yale, Harvard, from Robert Emmons, who is the, the world leader in research on gratitude and, and his scientific buddy that they do studies with. They all kind of have a different um, definition of gratitude, if you will. So I'd like to just read a couple um, by Robert Emmons. He says that gratitude is a felt sense of wonder, thankfulness, and appreciation for life. Yale says that gratitude is a state of mind that arises when you affirm a good thing in your life that comes from outside of yourself. And then uh, McCullough, who is Robert Emmons' buddy in research, says that people feel gratitude when they have benefited from someone's costly, intentional, voluntary effort on their behalf. So if you just take those three definitions and kind of merge them together, what gratitude really is, and at the core of gratitude, is humility. Humility is really the key because when, when we are grateful, we're recognizing that there's something coming from outside of us, and, and it's a gift. And we have this ability to either receive it or not. And when we receive that gift, that's from some source outside of ourselves, right? And, and religious people then, and, and may think that this is, this is, this is God and they're, and they're blessed by God. Or this can be a child who is grateful for their parents um, that's giving them life and, and you know, a bed to sleep in. Um, it's really that recognition that we are receiving something outside of ourselves that honestly we probably don't even deserve or feel that we may not deserve. And with that, in that definition comes the challenges altogether, right? Is, is humility is something um, that we all want to have. I think most cultures and societies see humility as a virtue. However, once we admit that that came from something other than our effort, we, um, we start to rethink things for a minute. We may start to question um, this, this whole humility and it can become a challenge. And we can talk about that a little bit later. Um, but really gratitude, it's an appreciation. It's a feeling 
and more so it actually provokes action yourself to either give back to the giver or maybe even pay it forward. So gratitude isn't just like this warm, fuzzy feeling inside, and it, it can be to some extent, but to be um, grateful and to be an actual grateful person or to be in gratitude versus be a grateful person really is this shift from feeling to doing. It's an action. Yeah. Well, and if I can add on to that, to Ashley's point, it really is a link between giving and receiving. And so the action of giving and receiving should it should increase motivation. So when you're being given someone something by someone, it should somehow increase the motivation within you to give back. And there's been a lot of studies around this. Um, you know, specifically when it comes to being grateful, there's different um, hormones within the brain that are being activated, dopamine, serotonin, and these hormones and these neurotransmitters, they kind of create pathways and these pathways end up in creating some sort of memory. And so they say, you know, you ha- it's the practice of gratitude, you have to practice to kind of um, make sure these neurotransmitters are constantly um, firing at each other. And, you know, there's an old saying, um, saying that neurons that fire together, wire together, if they're constantly firing, they kind of stick together as a group and they create memories and they create, um, you know, habits too, at some level, because it is the practice of. And so we're going to go through um, in a little bit some activities that we can do as we go into the holidays about how to practice um, gratitude and what that means when you're with family and we you know some some fun activities that we could we could do together. Um, yeah, it, you know, and that's the that's the big uh, challenge. I, I feel like uh, specifically me, um, the to start with a lot of times, you know, we hear uh, people saying, Oh, you you know, you need to be this, or we need to be this, or, you know, we should all be more grateful. We should all be more happy. And, but there's really not a lot of insight on how to do these things. And, And to your point, there are practices, right? You have to continue to sort of build on it. And I honestly didn't know that. To be uh, to be completely honest with you, you know, growing in, in your twenties, you're just kind. Of, I felt kind of lost anyway. <laughs> I think we all are trying to figure ourselves out, and then, and then, you know, thirties, you have a family, and you're trying to figure out that sort of new life and 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 new career, whatever else it might be. And um, you don't really get a how-to manual in in gratitude or in happiness or in practicing any of these uh, very important um, parts of your life to continue, you know, to be a sort of a well-rounded individual. I might what, debate you on that one, Jenna. Okay, we'll debate on that. So, I'm sorry, I debate you on the, the that because like, uh, you know, a shameless plug always on. I have them all the time. Everybody knows that. So I have, um, I've been as a Girl Scout leader now for, daughters uh she started when she's so seven years for the seven years scout leader i was a scout for four or five years my son just received his eagle scout this past week and um you know sometimes i don't think they act grateful to me but i see that they do practice uh based on kind of the definitions and what you would uh, my train ashley was talking about gratitude uh with folks and um I think they don't do that at home because I'm told by a psychologist that when they yell at you, it's because they feel like it's a safe space. So that I, I think that's why they don't act like they're always grateful. So I'm going to go with that one. But they're at other places. People say they're great, you know, and I've seen them do lots of acts of kindness and they, they give and they, they stick with things. Um, you know, and I think that, that, that kind of the things that they've learned ingrained in them and these programs about what it means to give back and what it means to be a, a, a not just a good citizen, but a p- person and be um, like in Girl Scouts, we talk about being a sister to every girl to, um, you know, my daughter's one who will stick up for people at school. If she sees them being bullied, she's just like, that's not cool. Like, or if her friends decide to talk bad about other girls, she's all of a sudden like, no, I'm not, we're not doing that today, you know, and she's willing to put her neck out there and have those friends walk away from her because she doesn't want to be associated with that. And most of the time, everybody comes back to her because they realize like, it's not that she's trying to be goody goody. It's just that she's being real with them and saying, you know, why, why would you be like that? Like be grateful for what you have, like don't put other people down, um, those kinds of things. So I think scouting 
is a good thing. And there are programs that you can help teach kids that early on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, gratitude actually um, is shown to strengthen social interconnectedness. So making you feel like you are part of society, because there is that give and take. Um, and, And that's a perfect example, Jennifer, what you're saying with the scouting world. I've been a Girl Scout my whole life from kindergarten to 10th grade, I graduated with my silver award. So I mean, I volunteered my whole life and been a part of this mm-hmm. community. Um, and, and it really does make a difference because you feel connected. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Is, so th- it sounds uh, I'm, my takeaway um, in this because I didn't, ha- we didn't have the means for me to go to Girl Scout. Well, and I'm going to wait a real quick there too. If anyone ever um, who's listening to this thinks they don't have the means for scouting, there are programs to pay for scouting for you. Yeah. So you just have to you know talk yeah. to the your scout leader, your local scouting office, the national scouting office, both in Girl Scouts and now it's called Scouts BSA, whatever they changed the name to. They all have programs to make it available to, to young men and women. So don't let that stop you. Don't let money and, be a stopper. And you know, there's also other programs like STEM education programs for specifically for both women and and men or girls and boys and 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 um, anyone who identifies in between or outside. Um, so there are programs out there, and um, you're always welcome to reach out to us, and we'll try to find a way to sort you know get those you guys connected. However, you know, it, it, for, for let's just say in the past, for those who hadn't had those experiences, it, it we there were challenges specifically in, in terms of how do you, um, you know, uh, be grateful and show gratitude and I, maybe showing gratitude is, is, might be a little be, bit easier than being grateful, if that makes any sense. So I kind of want to deep a little go a little bit deeper. Yeah. Into that. Let, me, let yeah. me talk to you about that, because I think that's a great, a great um, point that you've made. And I think that's where we get confused about gratitude, that wouldn't count as gratitude, right? Because what is the motivation behind what you're doing? And if if you're doing something that's grateful, you are going to feel gratitude, because it's coming from that place. It's almost, and you know, Michael, you'll probably talk about a little bit more, but research has shown that when you're in a place, in the state of being of great of gratitude, it is physically impossible to feel anxiety, and it's physically impossible to be depressed. So interesting. There, there is this, the, the, I think the component of feeling gratitude is what motivates the, the, the gratitude behavior. Those two have to go together, or I don't know if you can call the, act, the actual action gratitude, or is it just kind of something you're doing that looks like gratitude, maybe you want it to be gratitude, but that feeling is paramount. It is, mm-hmm. It's very important to gratitude, uh, but also the action too. And, and, you know, back to your point, I, I think there, there is a predisposition to gratitude and there is, um, depending on your environment that you're, you're growing up in, whether it's your home or scouts, um, you know, I was talking to my through the other day and I would go travel with my grandfather a lot. He was on in the railroad. He never saw his children. I was born. He retired. We spent every day together one summer and he took me down to the beach and he's like, oh, you should be so grateful. I didn't get to see a beach till I was 20 years old. And that stuck with me. And I realized like, wow, I'm at the ocean. And so I, I just began to look at life through this lens of mm-hmm. any opportunity was gra- was I was grateful for. The problem is, is that when bad things happen, how in the heck mm-hmm. can you be grateful when bad things happen? And that is where the key of gratitude comes in. That is where it has its most powerful effect is because the grateful person isn't just happy when things are going their way. They actually embrace all of life, the good and the bad. So there's no pretending that the bad doesn't exist or pushing the bad off. It's actually accepting the bad just as much as you do the good. And eventually you do start to see those bad, horrible and maybe even traumatic experiences as something to be grateful for. And when you can get to that point in your life, when you can look at those since those instances and maybe not as a whole, that whole bad yeah, situation no, it makes sense. It and yeah. say that happened to me, right. that teacher failed me. That's the best thing that could have happened to me. When you start, your mindset starts to shift. That's when you have that grateful mindset and it really starts it's so empowering and it's so it's so beautiful to to see other people when they start to change from being negative and this and seeing all the bad saying you know what I'm glad I got that divorce or I'm glad I got fired from that job 
maybe not at the time. And it took me a little bit to get there, but now I see, I have so much to be grateful for because if this didn't happen and then you start connecting the dots. And so it's the way that you start connecting the dots and then your brain starts to connect the dots and, and you literally can rewire your brain on, on these practices. And at first it may not come natural and you're like, this is hard to do. I don't know if I really feel grateful. Right. But it doesn't mean you can't be sad, right? Like you can still be sad. The bad thing happened. Cause I think people get so confused about, um, feelings versus you're like, you talk about gratitude being actions then. And the, the, that, that notion, because you get so stuck in some feeling that it's what the action Cause I always tell my kids, you know, it's not, it's not the feeling that's good or bad. It's what you do next. That's going to be good or bad with that yeah. feeling. And that's, that's an interesting perspective, right? And, and um, we've all kind of gone through that. Uh, of course, Jennifer and I specifically around being laid off, you know, in, in the beginning of the year, because I've been, I've been and divorced and I will tell you <clears throat> like why I was glad to get that big thing. I can tell you the, what I'm grateful for the most of it was my kids. Like I have okay, two everyone awesome raise kids. your hand. If you've been divorced, <laughs> <laughs> every single one of us. So I think we've all sort of been in that and, and our significant others or ex significant others, I'm sure have had very similar feelings around, um, just the, the, um, the sadness and everything that goes around being divorced and, and the whole process. So, so then the question is, and, and I actually, um, I know my three and I'll just uh, talk, just uh, if you'll allow me my three, I, um, just mm-hmm. to mention a conversation you and I had, um, it was near our, when we, when I was going through a divorce, uh, for in the, the beginning of that. And then my third, you had, you had, you were in, uh, I believe you had already finalized it. And I asked you specifically, like, how long is it going to take to get out of this? Like, what was your time frame where you finally felt like, okay, you know, like it's going to be okay. You may not be out of it a hundred percent, but it, like you right. went, came to a place where you're like, okay, you know, yeah. and I think it's different for everyone. Um, yeah. But I'll let you talk a little bit about that. Yeah, no, and I think I think it is different for everyone. And it depends on how you know, you kind of, you kind of look yourself in the mirror and say, okay, this is what I've gone through. And this is what I have to learn from it, and whatnot. But I think some of it is a practice of too. I know with me, I'm I, I practice, I practice daily um, mindfulness specifically, but all different types of mindfulness, anywhere from, you know, actually sitting meditation to yoga to Reiki. Um, and I actually have a gratitude jar I'm going to talk to you guys about in a little bit too, which, you know, that becomes the practice of it. Once you're practicing, you're writing down your, your, you know, your actions, you're physically doing yoga. I mean, your brain technically literally rewires and where we have that capability and that power within us to rewire our brains. And it's such a beautiful thing when you think about it. I mean, you, you don't, you don't have to stay in whatever mindset you're in, you are able to change it and consciously change it um, by by certain actions, you know, going back to the scouts and just kind of how intertwining um, the give and take among mm-hmm. within your lifestyle. Um, and it does make a difference, um, but it takes practice. It does not happen overnight. Um, you know, I'm <laughs> probably five years post divorce, and I, you know, am I still am I still getting over it? Maybe a little bit. You know, it really t- yeah. it takes a lot of self reflection. And, and recognizing, you know, your side of it and what needs to happen and change, um, you know, to make yourself a more balanced, happy person. So it is, it is very personal to each person. Um, yeah. And, what they're and is that, through. is it okay, Ashley, like, is it okay to, to have that many years to, to sort of move past a, that feeling or, you know, hurt, um, is three years. Okay. Is five years. Okay. Is 10 years. Okay. Like what is, I, I sometimes feel like I, I, it's, uh, I'm taking too much time to get past something. Um, or I feel like a lot of people may feel the same way. I'm not sure. So just a question to you, what is, is there a time period that's okay? I think that's a great question. And I think any time that anyone needs to do anything they need to do is their time. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's a personal opinion. Um, I don't think there's is, is a one stop or shop for anything, even gratitude or happiness. We all have kind of this journey to go on. Um, so I don't even know how to answer that. I think that we all struggle. And, and you know, I, I have a very decent relationship with my ex and my ex-husband and you know, I'm grateful for him. And, and it's funny. I remember one day when I, I met my, my now husband and it was, it was actually around Thanksgiving time. It was so funny. We were talking about 
my ex and he's like, well, you talk so highly of him. Why, why did you even get a divorce in the first place? Why are you like, he was so confused, you know? And, and so we worked through that. And then later he told me, I'm so grateful for your ex-husband. Like my now husband is grateful for my ex-husband because when you can step back, right. And stop comparing yourself and stop Mm -hmm. looking at, Oh, this is the way it should be. And it's it's not this cookie cutter approach. You stop comparing yourself Mm -hmm. to everyone else. Mm -hmm. And you really Mm -hmm. look at that person and you realize, wow, I love this person. And everyone they came into counter with before they met me has made them who they are good or bad. So So I don't even know if that answers your question, but um, I think I got over mine before it, it was done. You know, oh, but that yeah. was because I was done before. You right? were, you know? yeah, you were in a different, um, what's the, the, the cycle, right? Stage of your, um, the, the grief uh, stages, right? The grieving stages. And um, some people mm-hmm. are, I actually read about this just for recently. It's uh, like a- yeah, some people, especially when when folks are divorcing, you know, some may have checked out sooner rather than later. And then you have to allow the other person to sort of meet you where you are right now. And it may take a lot longer, a little longer than what you're thinking. So you're both on the same uh, stage of your grief to where now you can maybe be a little bit more, uh, I guess, appreciative or recognize um, what you need to do. Yeah, but you know, I, I think a lot of it goes back to how you look at it. So if you can yeah, look yeah. at the positive side of whatever is occurring mm-hmm. um, versus if you look at the negative side, you're rewiring your brain mm-hmm. in one direction or another. I mean, yeah. there's plenty of evidence out there that shows that um, if you actually document, like they, we call it journaling in our world, right. but if you actually document positive things that happen to you on a day-to-day basis, whether it's once a day or three times a week, um, it does in a long, you know, in the long term, even six months later, it shows in fMRI brain scans that there is a positive effect of how the neurotransmitters are, you know, firing at each other. So it does make a difference if you look at something in a positive way or negative way. Um, and, you know, one activity that I'd like to talk about is the the gratitude jar. There's a lot of, here, here's my here's my little gratitude jar showing you guys. Nice. But what it is, is, and, you know, Ashley and I have it on our Zessa website. And what it is, is it's a jar of just, you um, sheets of paper so you can cut them out and so like if I take one out right now it says today I am grateful for and there's an empty space so you just take a pen and you put every morning if you just fill one of these out today I am grateful for that's the action of and so then it fires those neurotransmitters and becomes a long-term you know positive affecting body so so what are you guys grateful for today I mean oh that's great I like that I actually like that because it's a little more of a physical action it's more visual and um for me specifically i'm i do much uh, i learn better when i see or are much more visual than just hearing or um pra- by practicing is how right. i learn more so i like that actually a lot and i i feel like i maybe i need to do that with my with my son right like just having yeah. both of us yeah. have a gratitude um jar well and i think it's it's so nice going into the holidays i think everyone yeah. should just go home and create a gratitude jar go to zessa yeah, wellness's website with, you know in and, and, and we'll put a that website jar. up so people will list, listeners can see it and we'll yeah. put it also like on our with the, the information about this session so if anyone's looking for that website we'll put that link there for you guys so, yeah and yeah well, well, we were talking about like when family comes by this holiday season. I mean, you have a gratitude jar oh, in the middle of your kitchen table. Nice. And Make every them. morning someone has to pick it. And it creates oh, this energy and ad- environment within the home. Maybe you know, that's what am I what, grateful for? That's great because then you're starting off the day in a positive way, in a mm-hmm. maybe not a positive way, but like maybe just a nice way of starting a day. Because- All right. So we've had a lot of, of good conversation going on here when I continue this going here. And one of the things, so first, Ashley, you mentioned you're a professor of philosophy mm-hmm. at Brookhaven. Um, I think you mentioned earlier too, at one point, talk to us about ethics, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which has yeah. got to be an interesting subject to teach right now. Uh, <laughs> and so this path you took, like, so you're, you're new philosophy and then the wellness. So how, how did this whole journey path come together? And, and what does that look like to us? You know, oh, um, man, and thank you for that question and framing it that way. Um, that, that helps me a lot in my mind. Um, I, okay, I, I've had this passion my whole life and I didn't want to work to be happy later, later, right? I don't want to do this and then one day I'll be happy, get this and then I'll be happy and get this and then go to my degree and get, because it's like, what? That doesn't make sense. Why can't we be happy now? 
And so my whole philosophical wellness life journey started, I think, as a child of like, I'm not going to wait until someday to finally have my happiness. And so naturally, I, I think I just came to realize that your circumstances really never define mm. your true happiness. Um, if your happiness is defined by circumstance, it's always going to change. Always, because your circumstances are always going to change. Uh, so I, I just remember at a young age, always interested in happiness and the unity of people and blah, blah, blah. And so I kind of went down this philosophy route because studying it made me happy. I was enjoying it. I learned. I, I got to challenge myself and things that I thought three years ago, I no longer think and just continuously evolve philosophically. And then wellness is, is I think, is so important because it's mind, body, spirit, friends, family, fun, intelligence. It's, it's just you need to be balanced. Um, so they, I think they actually naturally just kind of fell together. Um, but I, I think my journey into gratitude came when the, the study of it and understanding of it was when I realized that the reason I'm a happy person is because I'm a grateful person. And there actually is this quote that says, you know, happy people, it's not happy people that are grateful, it's grateful people that are happy. So I was, as I was getting a certification on the science of happiness, the last chapter was on gratitude. And the reason why is because gratitude is what's shown to improve our happiness levels, scientifically, all of, all of the above. And it's like, it dinged on me. And I was like, this is why I find the silver lining. This is why I'm, I'm not going to invalidate someone when they're telling me that something bad is happening, but we do have to get past that. And what is the silver lining? What is the good thing? What is the good thing we can take away from this? And I was watching something a while back with um, Ariana Huffington of the Huffington Post. And she said every night at dinner, her father would ask her, what did you fail at today? What did you fail at today? So failure became something that was not feared. It actually was something that they anticipated and were looking forward to because with failure, with that negative experience, they were able to grow and come over challenges and get through grief and get through despair is by accepting and actually being grateful for failure. And that really stuck with me because um, I think that through my life in this journey of gratitude and happiness, it really stems from having this appreciation that I would not be here if it wasn't for everyone else that I've come to in my life, the good and the bad. And you really do have to let go of that sense of entitlement that some of us have, or I worked for this. I did this. I earned this instead of sitting back and say, well, yeah, but I was able to earn this because I was given this and I was given that earlier. And so my journey has been that of ups and downs and sadness and happiness, but the core, I think of who I am and, and, and I'm, I'm proud to say it is, is that I do believe that I have a grateful mindset and it's contributed to a lot of things that maybe a lot of people in my situation wouldn't be happy. They wouldn't be fulfilled or think that they would be fulfilled. And no matter if I've got a big two story house or a small little apartment, my happiness level hasn't changed. So I think my journey really started as a young child when my grandfather took me to the beach and said, you should be really grateful for this. I didn't see a beach till I was 20. And you get that perspective that maybe I don't need to compare myself to everyone else. And I need to really just count my blessings and accept the bad, all of it, take it in, but really focus on the good things and the things I, sh I should be grateful for. So um, maybe my three can give a, a more <laughs> specific example of an experience of, of, that you felt gratitude and, and, and felt it and maybe shared it. Well, with well, I have to say right off the bat, Ashley is such a positive person. I've been working with this girl and she is so positive. I'm not always that positive. <laughs> I, I, I'm not always, you know, smiling and happy go lucky. I think uh, she, she was, you know, I, I think Ashley, you, you were given um, the opportunity to really like blossom um, and kind of move in your own direction. I was good in my life. It was structured. I mm -hmm. was told right. what to do, when to do, how to do it. You know, and I did it. <laughs> I did it. Yeah. You know, I, I got all the education in the world that I was told to get. I, you know, you know, I, I, I did it all. I did it all. I got married when I was told to get married. I, all of the above, um, so structured. And so I've always, I, I have a difficult time sometimes with the gratitude side. And um, I, I, 
have had historically a tendency to maybe concentrate on um, a little bit of the negative and I've been a little bit more pessimistic um, and I've really had to practice to come out of it. I mean, it's been difficult for me, you know, and, you know, if, if, if we want to talk about like Reiki and some of the historical karma that comes, you know, through our energy cycles and stuff, but th there is a side to it. There is a piece to it. Um, and science is following as we, you know, we understand it more and more and better and better. But um, I really had to work to, to get out of it. I practice a lot and I have been for a long time, um, you know, day in and day out, meditate twice a day. I have to. And then I've learned over time that it really settles my body. It really settles the expectations that whoever makes for me or if I make it in my own head now as an adult, um, you know, I, I'm so hard on myself and I'm, I'm my hardest critic as some of us are, you know, but but. I, I've had struggled with it quite a bit. And so for me, some of this practicing the gratitude jar, there's a gratitude letter that we would recommend as well as we go into the holidays. You know, uh, I have to actually physically do things to rewire my brain, but I've been moving in the right direction and I can feel it working, you know, 10 years later, I can really feel it working. So it is a practice. And I just want to, you know, make you guys aware that you really do have to incorporate it into your day, and day, day in and day out life. And so meditation, I always think of too, like, when I was growing up, I always thought about it. Somebody sitting, you know, you know, like the whole looking yoga pose and everything. Oh, as I, yeah. And it was like, you know, little bells and incense and everything. But as I've gotten older, I've kind of learned that at least from my perspective, and I don't know what you guys have, you guys have but meditation can be different things to different people where you find the solace of where you kind of come to that inner peace in yourself and where you're, you, you're, I feel like meditation is when you're fully aware of the senses and where you're breathing and everything around you. Um, and for me, where I have learned that that sets in place is about mile four when I go out and run. Um, and my mind goes completely blank. And I think that's why runners are crazy people. Like they think we all are, but it is, you talk about the rewiring of your brain. I feel like that's when it's happening for me all right there. They're like, what are you doing bad things to your knees? I'm like, no, that's okay. I started running after 40, so I'm good. Um, it's, so, um, but yeah, it's that whole rewiring of your brain and that breathing in the moment. So, I mean, I, would you agree there's other ways to meditate that everybody kind of has to find that own space? It doesn't have to be the sense of sitting down and breathing and completely yeah. still or what yeah. are some other things you've seen or practices there? Yeah, no, meditation is just the concentration at some moment in time. So whether you're painting or drawing or writing or, you know, exercise, and some people consider exercise and meditation, um, mm -hmm. just walking, but concentrating on the steps, um, cooking, some people, you know, cook, love cooking, and they get so into it, even even if you're having a glass of wine, but there's, it's just this, this, um, you know, this meditative habit it's it's being in the moment focus. in whatever you are doing the mm -hmm. focus yeah, yeah the focus yeah. And I'll jump in right there that's that's great when you think of meditation we're kind of like a technique or, or concentration and and there's mindfulness meditation which is a type of meditation that you do mindfully but you know where mindfulness really comes in is that that's kind of like a, a state of being if you will it's being in the present moment and you're kind of like observing and you're trying to detach any emotion from, from what you're, you're feeling and thoughts and you're just really being in the present. So, you know, I keep thinking like right now, my stress is being home, being a professor, working with Sessa, having two children home um, that are, that are schooling at home, you know, and, and there's times when I want to yell. And honestly, I do sometimes. And I'm like, where is this coming from? And this practice and, and even gratitude is a, is a mindfulness practice, right? I'm sitting there and I'm, upset you know my kids are running around screaming I'm trying to be on a zoom call like this and I'm having to time out and go and you just get flustered and mindfulness is that moment when you're like oh, I know I am I'm doing this and you've got that ability to just switch it right in the middle right in the middle of the action in the thought in the process and so meditation is what really helps build that ability when we're triggered and we're over whatever emotion we're feeling is to just have that like quick awareness. And that's the key. And I do it with gratitude. I'm like, you know what? I should be grateful that I'm able to stay home, that I am, that, that I'm here with my kids. They're not in score, whatever my situation is that I feel so bad. You know, my three and I've been talking about, I'm just so stressed, but it's like, wait a minute. No, I'm, I should be grateful that I'm this stressed out right now that I have the privilege 
to be able to make the decision to stay home and get this stressed out all day long, you know, and, and that's still accepting that I'm, I'm, I've had it up to here today. I'm, I'm not feeling happy right now. I'm not feeling myself, but admitting it and, and giving yourself that moment to feel that anxiety and that frustration is, is kindness. But then the key is right then try to turn it around. And I think that over time, that's the habit, right? That's what, you know, my three has been really inundating herself with, with this practice is, and I'm sure it's probably been showing her, oh, wait a minute, I'm, I'm starting to think this way. I'm starting to compare mm-hmm. myself to the Joneses, or I think I should be here at this point in my life where it's been five years since my divorce and I'm still this. It's like, wait a minute. No, give yourself that, that love and that kindness to say, feel this, but switch it, try to switch it. Sure. And that, that's my, my nugget is, is if you're not going to practice the letter you're not going to do the gratitude jar. Just try to become more aware of those stressful situations in which you don't feel grateful and try to find that one tiny little seed in that situation that you, you can be grateful for. And, and Maita, you, you said that like Ashley's like a really positive person and stuff. And mm-hmm. I, uh, one of these are about to you is people comparing themselves to others. And I think though that there's a flip side. I, I tend to think of myself as a rather positive person as well. I don't know, Jigna, would you agree? Um, no, she doesn't think so. Not really. No, I'm just no. kidding. No. <laughs> no, you are. But I get worried that people are thinking why she's over positive or she's not real. It's what not are authentic. They think of me? Yeah. Um, they're thinking yeah. I'm being the um, too positive, I don't know, like person, like we yeah. call, call them on one of our episodes. Like we're just like, the, like that is not real. She's not really happy. She can't be that happy. She doesn't have a job. And how is she managing four kids and blah, blah, blah. You know, and I'm like, but dude, like my life could be so much worse. Like there really are things to be happy about. Like I got to be awake today. I got to like, you know, have a cup of coffee, even though I spilled it all over my desk. I got to have a second cup that's not all over my desk, you know? (laughs) And, and people like it, like, sometimes they look at me like, what is your problem? Like, you know, and there's places where I've worked where people literally don't want to be around me because they think I am just too happy for them. (laughs) There is, there is a friend to that. I've lost a best friend. Oh, because you're so positive. Interesting. Yeah. I so I I can see both ways. Um, I can see the uh, the the one big thing I am I've been working on this decade specifically is empathy. Um, and uh, I think I've always been an emotional empathic person. However, it's it's that practice of, of being empathic. I I feel like makes me feel a little bit more grateful as to um, uh, who that individual is or accepting that individual a little bit more. Um, so I it, just putting myself in, in both, sh- you know, sets of uh, shoes. Um, there's the overly positive person and then there's the overly negative person. And, and I, in my personal opinion, and I don't really put you, Jennifer or Ashley in those categ- overly positive categories, because I, I do Jennifer, I've seen you in those human emotions where you weren't positive or where you weren't mad or, or you are mad or angry, you know, just having, certain emotions and you weren't masking it there are others who are that way where they are masking their true uh, emotions whether it's on the positive end or the negative end and I feel that's where the so so, uh, sort of the toxic negativity or toxic positivity kind of comes in and in either direction and this is my opinion I don't think you can be grateful because you're overly positive and you're masking your um, negative feelings. And then if you're overly negative, you're masking your positive feelings. And in, in each scenario, you're kind of preventing yourself from being and uh, accepting and, and your, your true self in a sense. Well, um, I, I think you, know, you got to see me some, I've allowed myself to be vulnerable with you. There are people that don't know yeah. me that and, and I will not allow myself to be vulnerable. So they won't have seen what you got to see. So they do still try to tend to put me on that. Other and that, so then you uh, can you blame them, right? But, like uh, you can't blame I, I for don't someone to be with everybody. So, right? No, you don't necessarily have to be. <laughs> yeah, but however, I mean, devil's advocate, right? Right. Absolutely, no one should be vulnerable uh, or, uh, unless they feel comfortable with that individual. However, if the only thing someone sees of you is o- being overly negative or being overly positive, they're understanding of you is just that. So their understanding is, again, I'm not saying they're right for doing it, but you know, it's that's, then we have to sort of sit back ourselves and be like, okay, well, um, I can't blame them for, for feeling that way towards me because that's all they've seen. 
And then we sort of have to be like, okay, you know, I understand not that I'm okay with it, but I can empathize as to what they're saying. Um, I don't know if it's right or wrong. I just, I see Ashley empathy. has some, a thought here. Like it's, I, it's I, I know, I'm, I'm, I'm stirring up the pot here. here. Because I think one reason I am such a whatever person is because I don't give up what people think. Which is fabulous. I was going to say, I do, like that, right? Though. But I do. I care so much what they do. Yeah. But not if, if they're going to write me off because, because I'm too positive yeah. or yeah. because of, I feel good. And it, it feels good to be that way. It literally creates dopamine and serotonin in the yeah. brain. And we all know mm-hmm. why people do crazy drugs, right? To feel mm-hmm. those things. And so there's a point in which you're, you're so positive and someone that writes, you have to just be like, they can't understand, right? Exactly. And, and then if they exactly. and if they care that much, they're gonna be like, "Look, boop. why?" You know, this happened with me and my husband, right? When we first met, and he's just like, "You can't be happy like this all the time." Like he literally called me on it. He wants and to know so, what you were taking. He wanted a prescription <laughs> with you. Did, and I had to break down. Well, right. guess what happened to me when I was this old? And guess what happened? No, I've been through hell and back several times. Okay, it's not that I've lived this sheltered, perfect little life. I've seen things and I've been through it too. And there is a part of connection with people and you don't have to be completely vulnerable, but if you care about what that person thinks, I think there is a conversation to be had and say, you may think that I'm overly positive, but I need to let you know. Well, and I think particularly I'm thinking about companies that are like, okay, one place I worked before, you know, that, that there were so many negative people that if you didn't fit in that negative bucket, mm-hmm. they kept pushing you out. And the corporate culture, so this is our thing about right. corporate wellness too. Like that corporate culture had become toxic in a lot of senses. And I think there were people higher up were so unaware of how toxic it was because they were so up here. They weren't in those, that conversations that created that corporate toxicness. And so then you, you try to be that change agent and be po- and they just keep pushing you further and further and further out. And mm-hmm. you're like, you know what? Peace out, dude. I'm out. I'm leaving. Mm-hmm. I'm, you know, misery likes company. I, yeah. And yes. you know, it, that is of course will be the change that it was the better, you know, the gratitude then comes from there was I was grateful yeah. to learn that that company was not a good fit for me. I think the sad part is how many companies are missing out and losing great employees yeah. or getting productive work done, even with the employees who are living in this toxicity, how do you get them out of it? Yeah. yeah. Well, and that's, that's the where beauty. you guys come in, right? Yeah. That's yeah. the beauty to Zessa Wellness. We're mm-hmm. able to come in and provide a baseline understanding of what is mindfulness? What does it mean in the corporate world? How kind of community setting it? it there is an interconnected side to it. And, and what is wh- what does that look like from a day to day perspective in the in the in the in a company, especially as we're virtual with COVID and kids mm-hmm. running around? I mean, our world has completely changed and there's a lot of anxiety around that. Um, and actually gratitude to what it does when it does it to your brain. I mean, it actually works similar to PTSD medicine or antidepressants. I mean, it works similar to that. It takes longer. It's not overnight, like a pill may be. You know, even pills are at least 30 They're days before overnight. they go into effect. <laughs> 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 Been there, done that. <laughs> but, 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 you know, there is the practice of, and it, it does make a difference, um, even within the culture of organizations and companies. And that's exactly where Zessa Wellness comes in. So it's a great plug. And so I have my Friday calendar positive note here, and I don't know if the glare, if you guys can see it, it's going to be backwards. So anyway, right. Gratitude. Okay. There you go. Gratitude begins where our sense of entitlement ends. I just Perfect. looked down and I didn't know that that was sitting on my calendar. Like I hadn't removed it. It was Friday's quote. So there, I, yeah, sometimes the universe just puts us all right where we're supposed to be. Right. Yeah, to be. Absolutely. I, um, I definitely, I love the build an attitude of gratitude. I, I think I'm going to have to put a little, print it out, stick it on my wall or something just so it kind of re- keeps reminding me and, and doing, you know, that gratitude chart. I think it's a really good idea. And the whole journaling part, I, I, I think one thing I will say, it, the word journaling, I feel like it discourages people. Um, it just seems to be a daunting task when people or therapists say, oh, you need to journal. Mm-hmm. Instead, like, I guess this is a request to all mental health professionals, maybe address it in a different way um, to your patients. And yeah, do a grad, uh, just, mm-hmm. hey, I um, cool. say something nice on a daily basis, on a piece of paper or on a, on a um, notebook. Don't say journal, just say notebook. It could even be like, you don't want to write, right? You could just do it as a, a record your notes. It record, your yeah, just do yeah. something, uh, a way, physical way. Of I like doing. the way you guys said so, it was like, it was taking action. Like action, I think that's yeah. a, you know, take an action. 
Yeah. Maybe yeah. that's the way to. But, but Jake, for- I hear your frustrations with that. I've been trying. I have, I have a journal. I put it by my bedside. I carry it with me to the living room. I have not been able to yeah. pick up a pen and write in it because of that daunting feeling. Like, what yeah. am I going to write about? But the beauty about this jar and like picking out one sheet of paper a day and writing one line today, I'm grateful for, you know, yeah. the rain outside. It's beautiful. Like, I'm grateful to be indoors and be able to see it and hear it and smell it. Yeah. You know, just one thing a day. Forget the journal. (laughs) And then it becomes your medicine, right? You have a crappy day and then you have this jar that you can go and sit down and read from. And then it's not something else someone put in you or something. It's you. And you're kind of healing yourself. You're like, you know what? I need to sit down here and read what I wrote over the last 30 days because I'm not feeling very grateful or I'm feeling whatever, you know, negative emotion. And and you reread your own thoughts. And you're like, wait a minute. It's like a reminder to yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, we're talking a little bit, a lot about practices and I want to just ask um, Ashley, you know, is there, aside from the, the, jar, the gratitude jar, there's the, the journaling or the note taking, I'll say, um, just any other practices that you feel is a good way or start for individuals, especially yeah. now? Well, you know, one thing would be a gratitude meditation as well, like a guided one that could guide mm-hmm. you in, um, ways to think about being grateful. Uh, you know, that's one thing. Uh, but one of the most powerful things, actually the most powerful thing that you can do is what's called a gratitude letter and a visit. Um, right now it would be a virtual visit, but um, it's a very pointed exercise in which you, you think about, you think about someone in your life that that's, that's impacted you. That's, you should be grateful for that's given you something or led you somewhere. And, and you spend some time and, and we have a prompt o- on the website as well, where it, it's like a, a worksheet you can kind of do to get your mind thinking if it's difficult to do, because it can be. Um, and you write a letter and you tell this person what they are to you, what they mean to you, what they did to you specifically and how they've impacted your life. And, and if you can pick up the phone and call them and read this letter to them or post COVID, you know, pre COVID, we could actually go and read it to them. Studies have shown that the increase of happiness goes up exponentially and lasts for about a month, like 30 days, which is is extremely powerful. So, you know, you may want to next 30 days, write another letter or do the gratitude jar, kind of maybe flip flop one month, do a gratitude jar. And then the next month, write a letter. Um, I had, I just feel so privileged throughout my life. Um, You know, both my parents, they didn't graduate they didn't go to college. They didn't graduate college. I was the first one to attempt to go to college and and finish it. And, um, in my undergrad, I started studying philosophy because I loved it. And I had a professor who was so, so hard and you either loved him or you hated him. And I wrote a paper and I got it back and it looked like there was just blood all over it. You know, I made a 70. Um, I was in tears because no one ever really graded worth anything throughout my education. He actually cared and he read it and it was horrible. He had a policy that we could rewrite that paper as many times as we wanted to get the grade that we wanted. And I wrote that sucker seven or eight different times. And in the midst of all that, um, he took a liking to me and I took a liking to him and it's just going to make me cry (laughs) because I'm, I think a big part of who I am today was because that person saw something in me that no one else did. And I, I went to graduate school. I have publications. There's so many things that I've done because this man said, Hey, have you thought about going to graduate school? You should. Have you thought about a publication? You should. And guess what? I'll edit your paper. I'll help you. And so not to get into the details, details, but this, I think is the feeling of gratitude when you can look and say, wow, someone came into my life and whirled it around and I did nothing to deserve it and those moments when you can be humble and realize that yes of course it took me to study and it took me to write the paper but really when you realize that the fabric of our world is so dependent on these social connections and being grateful and giving gratitude you can you can really step back and say wow like I'm nothing without everyone else, nothing without everyone else that's come into my life. And I I wrote this letter. I sent it to, to my, to Dr. Yaffe. And he wrote me back a quick little, nice little email that was so him. 
And every single time I think about it, every time we bring it up, it literally makes me feel amazing or happy. And, and, you know, you're crying and you're, it's like, it's happy cries. It's tears of joy. It's, it's true gratitude of realizing like, would Zessa even exist if this person didn't come in my life? And, you know, those are some other exercises to do too. You take these positive events in your life and you erase them and you think what your life would be if you hadn't have had those positive events. Mm -hmm. Um, so I highly recommend the gratitude letter, especially if you're feeling grief, overwhelm, or, you know, you don't know what you're going to do this Thanksgiving because you're used to having a full house and no one's going to be there, or you're, you're worried because people are going to come and you're apprehensive because of COVID, you know, maybe take some time before this holiday of gratefulness and thankfulness, just to write a letter to someone who has really impacted your life and detail it, let them know exactly how they've done it. And you, you will, I think, um, if you don't feel the benefits of it, send us an email, let us know. We, we I really want to know if it doesn't work because the studies have shown in my three, I know you've probably done more research on, on the science behind it, but when we actually allow ourselves to feel that and be completely humble and write it down and send it off, um, there's something powerful about it. So I, I recommend doing it and experiencing that um, embarrassing cry of joy that, that we get. Um, and we shouldn't be ashamed of it as a positive person. And I just wanted to say this as a a positive person, when I started to downplay my positivity, that's when I knew there was a problem. That's when I knew there was a problem with my friend, or I knew there was a problem with it. If I have to hide who I am because I'm so positive or I'm so happy, I'm so grateful, then, then maybe I have to rethink those people that I'm associating myself with. And I I did want to end on that note, because I think that's very important that we need to be authentic, even if people think it's, it's a sham and it's not real, because at the end of the day, you're the one feeling it. You're the one going through it. And you know, if you're authentic and eventually I think that will outshine anyone's preconceived opinions. I needed you when I I was growing up in my twenties. I know. I'm like, I'm grateful for you, (laughs) Ashley. (laughs) (laughs) I'm I'm already thinking about, okay, January is this person, February is this this fabulous. You're, you're absolutely right. And I, and I'm, you know, uh, being and trying to be empathic towards the person who receives it. If I received a letter like that, I know it would make me feel amazing. You know, like that I have impacted somebody's life like that. That is, you know, I, th- I feel like it, it works in both ways. I think that's what you were saying anyway, but um, you know, the person, the, the person giving the letter, it makes them feel really great for the next 30 days. But this person who has a letter now has, can, open it up every time they feel not so great. And there have been times I've actually gotten text messages um, from, you know, people that are in my life when I was going through really hard times and might still be going through hard times that I, there are times I'll open up that letter, just remind myself like, Hey, you know what, this, this is me. I, I am these things. I don't feel it right now, but I am these things that they say. And it's hard to, to, to um, remind myself of that, but you know, it's a constant thing. You kind of, so I don't know what I'm, what I'm really trying to say, but I think that's a really great practice and we need to kind of all take note from that. That's powerful. Yeah. Very, very powerful. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, thank you guys so yes. much for, for, for just joining us. I, I'll be honest. I, I wasn't hundred percent ready for today. Um, it was a busy week, really frazzled, but I'm so thankful and <laughs> I'm grateful that you guys were, we're here and I, we were able to speak with you. It was a very powerful conversation. So I appreciate you guys. And, and um, I hope you guys know that. And Jennifer as well. I appreciate each in, in each individual um, person you guys are. So even though you're too po- positive for me at times, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, call me at you. 30 in the afternoon. <laughs> you'll, you'll see that positive. <laughs> So before yeah, no. you jump off, um, we do have a tradition here at um, at uh, Laid Off Life where we do talk about your fortune, our fortunes. And um, Jennifer, I'm going to take this one on for today. Go let's ahead. see. Let's see what the last one of this other batch was. Jennifer's going to go first, and then um, we'll get the others. Awesome. Things turn out best for the people who make the best of the way things turn out. 
I kid yeah. you not. That's what this says. Let me read it one more time for you all. Things turn out best for the people who make the best of the way things turn out. Isn't that what you've been saying all along? Or you guys have been saying all along? All about Outlook. <laughs> That's a good one. That's yeah, a good make one. this yeah. stuff up. It's really what was here. Like, it's eerie sometimes, the fortunes. Like, yeah. we had one where we all had the same courage, right? Yeah. Like, it's yeah. just so funny. So. It's, it's kismet. All right, uh, let's see. Okay, so who's next? Uh, uh, I, I see Ashley first, so I'm going to call right. on that. Is, uh, this is your fortune right here. So let's see what it says. If I can open it. All righty. Okay. This one says, you will be the talk of the town tomorrow. So <laughs> Woo! I hope you're ready. <laughs> Oh, Monday I don't know night out means, and about. Yeah. Do you have any days. plans tomorrow? No, I'm staying home. Maybe you need <laughs> to center the lotto numbers from the back of it. There you go. <laughs> All right, my three, this is yours. The, these, the wraps on these are much stronger than I anticipated them to be. Okay. I love that you guys do fortunes. Yes, because, you know, that's all we got. <laughs> <laughs> well, this one's not one enough. I'm going to have to break this one apart. So okay. crush it. Crush it, right? Crush it. Um, okay. Oh, my three. If you're looking for a sign, this isn't it. <laughs> <laughs> Look for the guy with the mullet. Look for the guy with the mullet. I'm gonna remember that. <laughs> that <laughs> look around for a, for a guy with the mullet. It really says look for the guy with the mullet. I think mine's not making it up. Now. Oh my goodness. Oh my yeah. gosh. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> okay, this one's mine. Oh, you will live vicariously and never discover through who. That too. That uh, too. Again, thank you, ladies, so much. Thank we you. appreciate. Yeah. It. It pleasure having you talk no, to us today. Yeah. Thank yes. you both for Jennifer and Jigna for allowing us to come on and talk a little bit about what we do, our passion. Absolutely. Thanks. Have so a much. great holiday season. You too. You too. Yes. Lots yes. to be grateful for. Mm -hmm. Lots to be grateful for. Yes. Jigna, we didn't disappoint, I think, right? There was a lot of a lot of stuff going on there. Talked about gratitude, some emotions. I was a, it was a good session. Uh, you hope everyone had a tissue because they needed it for this one for sure. Um, it's a uh, it was it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. Honestly, sometimes you go into conversations thinking, "Oh, we're just going to have a thirty minute conversation. I'll be fine." And then, you know, two hours later, you're still wanting to talk more and wanting to explore more. So it was a really good conversation. I needed it today for sure. Yeah, I, I think every time, and it was a good reminder. Like you talk about, we want more. I think it's been how grateful I have been all the people we've gotten to meet so far yes. on hashtag laid off life yes. and have these conversations with or even people I've known and then learn something else about them in these conversations. So it's been it's been pretty great. So um, it's awesome. So I again, thank you to Zessa Wellness for their time today. And uh, we'll put the information up of where you can find them online. But also, don't forget, you can uh, follow us on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter now, Instagram. And of course, you can go to uh, www.laidofflife.co. Laidofflife.co. That's correct. Yeah. <laughs> Laidofflife.co. .co, as Jigna would say, dot .co. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you next time. Have a good one.